Hey guys, Mrs. B. Gonzalez here, also known as Mrs. Talk Techie on YouTube. I'm so happy that you decided to click on this tutorial. Uh, if you're accessing it through our La Jolla ISD webpage, uh, this is an online PD session, so you will receive a copy of this. In addition, you'll be able to have a working session and uh, everything I do, you'll be able to do yourself. So it's, it's a really good uh, way to grow professionally uh, when it comes to ed tech guys. Um, it's all about QR code and I called it QR code magic because it went with our little Harry Potter theme. Uh, everything you need to know about QR codes. What are they? How do they work? What can I make out of them? And how can they impact my direct instruction in the classroom or outside of the classroom with this uh, remote learning time period that we're in, right? So with that said, a little bit more about myself. I'm gonna start with my greatest accomplishments. Uh, and they are my babies, my boys. I do have triplet boys. They're the ones in the uh, maroon uh, burgundy um, vest. And uh, they are eight years old, and I love them to death. And uh, then I have my five-year-old, Andrew. And he is the one that, I, they always ask me, you know, are they different? Yes, they are. But the little one is a little bit of all of them. So anyways, I love them. And they are my passion. They are my, what fuels me to continue. And I hope that one day they can grow to be inspired by my efforts and my work ethic and my passion. So um, with that said, a little bit more. Like I said, my name is Beatriz Gonzalez, but uh, everybody calls me Miss B. So feel free if you ever bump into me to refer me, to me as Miss B. That's not a problem. Um, I am a teacher at JD Salinas Middle School. I've actually been teaching for the district since 2007. Uh, I was a social, eighth grade social studies teacher for about 12 years. In addition to that, I've been a, a tech trainer for the district for a couple of years now. I'm a proud alumni, uh, 2003 La Jolla High School alumni. I have a bachelor's in history and as well as a master's in education administration. So enough about me. Let's get started with today's session. So our main objective is to identify what is a QR code, uh, how to create QR codes, right? The purpose is because this will allow us to create educational resources for not just our kiddos, but uh, for our parents uh, or for our colleagues as well. If we're at a different uh, position, if we're admin, if we're counselors, if we're uh, the nurse or clerical staff, everyone ha can take part in these sessions and learn and actually implement them directly into uh, their, their work. So uh, create innovative new ways to integrate tech directly into our teaching as well. What is our main goal? To be able to participate in this session and uh, do the hands-on professional development because you will get a copy of this session. So if you look at the description below, there is a link that will allow you to open up a copy of this session so that you can be following along. Now, what are the requirements as far as uh, tech and devices to be able to complete this session? And this is what I recommend. I recommend you have a secondary screen. This secondary screen can be any device, even your phone, and I want you to open up this session from that secondary screen because with that secondary screen, you will pause and play as you complete the tasks that we will be uh, giving here in this session, okay? Now, what kind of device would be best and ideal to be able to complete all of the tasks? A laptop, a Chromebook, or a desktop those would be ideal to be, to be able to complete all of the tasks. Can you complete some of them uh, using an iPad? Yes, okay? But I will be showing you uh, firsthand using a laptop. So that's why I, I, I recommend you using either a laptop, a desktop, even a Chromebook will work, okay guys? So it doesn't mean it can't be done with an iPad though. It can be done. Just remember that every time we, uh, we take a we download something you can take a screenshot of it okay uh, so moving on let's get started so what is a qr code how does it work first of all qr stands for quick response and a qr code works and can only be made if you have a link or an address a url that's the only way it can work 
So anything that has a link can be made into a QR code. And essentially, everything online has a link. And I'm going to show you how we can access those links. So if you want a website to be linked, we can make that happen. That's easy peasy, right? So you want to scan a code and for it to take you to a website, we can do that. I'm going to show you how to, how to make a YouTube video into a QR code, but most importantly, how to make it so that it starts at a specific time period uh, in that video. So let's say you find a video that's an hour long, but you want the kids to start at minute uh, 40, right? At the 40 minute mark, you want them to start. We can make that happen to where they scan the code and boom, it's starting right at the 40 minute mark. So that's really neat. What about images that you find online? An image of um, the water cycle or the life cycle of a butterfly. Any image, the, uh, an important battle of the Civil War, and you want the kids to take a look at that specific image. Because remember, if they Google something, they're going to get so many different things. But if you want them to look at something specifically, a specific image, I can show you how we get that image address and we can uh, make it into a QR code as well. And finally, we're going to talk about how everything we have living in our drive can be made into QR codes, PDFs, images, videos. So if you take a video from your iPad, right? You, took a, uh, you take a video of your kids working, pictures of your kids working uh, independently or using tech or whatever, we can make those into QR codes as well. So I'll be showing that to you as well. And finally, the last two bullets there is, remember I said anything with a link can be made into a QR code? Well, Picolage uh, has that feature to be made into, uh, that can give you a link, and then you can make that into a QR code. And finally, I'm gonna show you one way in which we can turn a regular hands-on activity into a techified uh, QR code activity. Okay, guys? So. I hope you guys are ready. I hope that you have your Google Slides presentation on hand so that we can start creating. These are some of the resources that we're gonna be using today. They're all web tools uh, to create QR codes. Um, I just wanted to show you the different, the availability that's out there. There's so many more. Uh, these are the ones that are my go-to because they all have a little bit of something extra that I like from each one, so that's why I like to go to these. Uh, but I mean, you're more than welcome to just stick with one, uh, or there, I'm sure there's others that you prefer or that you might come across that you like. But nonetheless, these are the ones we're gonna be using. And if you did access my uh, presentation, my slideshow, these are linked. So if you click on them, they'll take you to the website, all right? With that said, excuse me, with that said, uh, you might come across on some of these websites with uh, words like static QR code and dynamic QR codes. Now, what's the difference between a static and a dynamic? Well, a static kind of is what it sounds like, static. It doesn't move. Uh, what that means is it's set. Once that uh, QR code is made, that means it'll always be linked to that website. You cannot change uh, that QR code, it will never link to anything else. It's always going to be for that link that you created it for. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I thought that's how it always has been. You can create dynamic QR codes if the web tool gives you that uh, option, which a lot of the ones we're going to go over do have that option. And what is a dynamic QR code? That means you print out that QR code but if you ever want to, you can change the link that it takes you to, okay? So you'll always keep the same code, but it'll link you to different uh, websites or tools or YouTube videos because you'll be able to change that. Let me give you an example of how this would facilitate instruction in the classroom. I'm thinking if I'm an English teacher and I have to, I don't want to be running packets of, of uh passages to my kids, right? But we do need to, you know, work on them and we do need to practice like they're gonna play, right? So what I would do is I'd use a dynamic QR code. That means I would take the same QR code, I would take that one QR code, link it to a passage, keep that QR code, 
tape it on my the kids desks right with the clear tape and it'll stay there forever for the rest of the year but I will be changing the link to the new uh, passage every week so as we as we start practicing a new passage all they have to do is scan that code and it'll be linked to the new passage and then the following week scan the same code so we don't I don't have to be reprinting codes they're always going to be the same ones I just have to change the link I hope that makes sense that's just an idea that that I would think would work uh, I'm not an ELA teacher but I think that would one save a lot of time save a lot of paper um, and the kids would always have that routine and they know that's where they access a passage when they're working independently in the classroom uh, they can also you can send it home and you don't have to be sending a ton of QR codes because if you notice the QR codes don't say anything it's just the code so you can always put the code and then just put this will be your reading passages uh, make sure you scan them every Monday for the new reading passage so th those are just examples moving on so let's get working hands-on guys we're gonna start by going to qrstuff.com uh, I want you to press pause and I want you on your laptop to type it in and open up that page, that web page. On there, we're going to be creating three things. Plain text, a QR code, a website QR code, and a YouTube video uh, QR code. All right? So go ahead and press pause while uh, it takes you and opens up the qrstuff.com web page. So once you go to qrstuff.com, you might be uh, welcomed with a reflection of yourself, especially if your camera is allowed. It'll probably ask you to give it permission. Uh, and if you do give it permission to use your camera on this site, it's going to be to be able to access the scanning feature that it has to offer. That means not only does it create codes, it can also scan codes. So if your kiddos get a code in the mail or you, you send out a code, um, they can easily scan it here and they just go like this and it opens up and it'll direct them and I can click on this link and it'll open up what that code was. So this is just an image of me for a app smashing activity that I had in the past. So really neat feature uh, when it comes to qrstuff.com. So let's go to the creating a QR code. If I go to the home screen here, the home button, it'll take me to the creation part. Now you have all these features that you can create QR codes out of. Really, the two that I use here and the two that I recommend are the plain text and the website URL. You don't need the YouTube to make a YouTube QR code. You can use the website URL. Uh, a lot of the other features here are paid apps, I mean paid subscriptions. So uh, you can't really use them unless you're okay with creating a, an account and you know paying for it. But you don't need it, guys. There's always ways around it. So what are the two that I use here? The website URL and the plain text. So let's go ahead and see how the plain text works. Here, I clicked on it and I can actually add text here. So it's asking you, do you want it static or do you want it dynamic? Uh, remember, we, we talked about the difference. The only thing is a dynamic is part of the paid version. So I'm going to go with static. Okay. Now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to type in something. Why, what would I want my kids to scan and for words for text to come out? We got to think and be innovative. Well, I used to do this one activity paper base that had a poem, uh, a who am I poem. And it said, I was, uh, the leader of the Sons of Liberty. I am a, a, a revolutionary war hero or things like that. And then the kids would have to, on a piece of paper, write who they believe that person was. Well, why not do that? Scan it and it'll tell you, ask you, okay, who were you? So I'm going to say, who am I? Question mark. Notice as I'm typing, guys, I want you to notice the QR code is changing to, to uh, adjust to the text that's coming out here. So who am I? I am the commander in chief of the Continental Army. I am a war hero. I later became the first 
President of the United States of America. Okay, so that's just an example. So notice as I was typing, my QR code was changing. Now, all I have to do is go ahead and right click and copy this image if I'm working off of my, my laptop and paste it wherever I'm creating my resource for my kids, okay? Or I can choose to download it and it'll get downloaded onto my computer as well. But for now, since I just want to paste it onto my Google Slides presentation, uh, I'm gonna go over and paste it there. Go ahead and press pause and I want you guys to type in some information here and then I want you to copy this and we're gonna do this right here, guys. We're going to paste Control B and we're gonna paste that QR code right here, okay? So while you do that, I'm gonna show you how it looks on my end when I scan it. So here's the thing about a plain text QR code. Um, this is showing you how I scanned it using my phone. And if you use your an iOS device, you'll get a little, by that I mean if you use an Apple device, you have an Apple phone, you use a regular camera to scan your QR code. How it works for us is that you get a little uh, banner, a drop down banner that comes out at the top. Notice there's my text, but it doesn't show all of my text. Uh, but when I click on it, it actually directs me to uh, whatever my preferred web browser is. I had changed mine to uh, Google, so to Chrome. So that's why it took me to Google. And as soon as I pressed on it, this is where it took me to like information having to do with that. That's the only thing about plain text QR codes is that they're not necessarily just the plain text. It used to be that way, but with the new phone updates and things like that, this is what started happening now. Uh, so you do get to see what the text is uh, to a certain extent, but if you click on the banner, it actually takes you to like a, a search of that information that you typed in. So that's the only disclaimer when it comes to plain text. We don't use it often. I hardly ever use the plain text uh, QR code, but you never know and I wanted to show you uh, all the different things and features that you can do with QR codes. So that was plain text. I am gonna ask you guys, uh, here is your first task. I'm gonna ask you guys to make a plain text. So maybe you want the kids to search something interesting. You wanna give them a little scavenger hunt. You wanna tell them to find out everything there is to know about the Nile River or a bunch of different things. So let's say you have a lot of these plain text QR codes that are just, um, let's say, European countries. So every QR code has the name of a European country and you hand those out to the kiddos, they scan it and they see that it's a country in Europe, they click on it, right? They click on it and then it takes them and they get to learn and do a little research project on that European country and then go and present it out to the class. So that's just an idea of how we could make this work for us. So I want you guys to create a plain text QR code and I want you guys to put it right there where I put mine. Awesome. And when you're done, guys, go ahead and come back, press play on me, on my video, and I'll be here waiting so we can continue with websites. Websites, guys. Websites are very simple to create and we're gonna be using QR stuff to create those websites as well. So here's your first task. I want you guys to open up a tab with your school uh, website, okay? So your school page. So go ahead and open a new tab and I want you to open up your school webpage, all right? Here I am at my school website, webpage. I hope that you are looking at your school's webpage or if you don't work for a school and you're watching this video because you wanted to, because it's fun, I'm joking. If uh, you don't work for a school, maybe you work for a central office or whatever business that you work for, I'm sure you have a website that you use. Let's see how we can create a QR code from that website. All you have to do is go to the URL, also known as the Omnibox, which is right here. I'm gonna click on it. And when I click on it, it highlights the whole thing and then I'm gonna press Control C 
or Command C, depending on uh, what you're using. So Control C has copied that uh, URL to my clipboard. I'm going to toggle back uh, to QRStuff.com and I'm going to go to Data Type and I'm going to click on Website. So again, I copied the URL. I went to my QRStuff.com website. I clicked on Data Type and I'm using Website URL. And I'm going to paste it, so Control V. Notice it changed right there. And now I'm going to make it a static URL because I'm not planning on changing that one. And then I'm going to scan it and see if it works. Now I want you guys to go ahead and do that. And when you're done doing that, remember that you can right click this and copy the image or you can download it because if you always want to have it with you, if you're creating something, you can start uh, saving them, create a folder on your desktop, uh, on your documents and start naming them. Most importantly, once you download them, rename them. So I'm going to go to QR code and I'm going to type, I'm going to paste that QR code that I thought I copied. I'm going to copy the image and I'm going to paste it. Now I'm going to paste it. <laughs> I'm going to paste it right here and make it a little smaller. Here we go. And then in a bit, I'm going to show you how to mask it so that it kind of becomes a little bit of an oval shape as well. All right. So go ahead and do that. Press pause. And uh, when you come back, when you're ready, we'll work on masking that image. All righty, guys. So now that we're back, let's do a quick uh, Google Slides formatting uh, tip. You can always mask your images. And by mask, I mean you can make them the shape that you want them. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make it a little bit of a circular shape just to kind of fit the, the background that we have here, that, that mirror looking image. So I'm going to select it. Always remember that in order for your toolbar to, to come out, you need to select whatever you want to work on or else that toolbar won't be available. So let's say I'm on my slide, that toolbar changes to format my slide. If I click on this image, the QR code, now I can format that specific image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this crop image, but I'm going to click on the down arrow and it says mask image shape. And now I get to choose the type of shape I want to use to mask this image. So I'm going to go for a circle. And uh, actually it's almost perfect. I'm going to open it up a little bit more, but I want to open it up just a tad because I don't want the corners to be cut off. Um, notice they're a little bit cut off and I can actually go a little oval, but because the whole thing isn't white completely, it might look a little off, but... Um, here we go. There we go. So then I'm going to click outside and I kind of, I kind of cropped off the edges, uh, the corners so that it fits into that oval shape. So if you want to give it a try, it's going to be a little bit difficult, uh, but try your best and let's see what, uh, you're, if you're able to do it guys, press pause. And then, uh, when you're ready, press play and I'll be here. So a YouTube video. This one's really, really popular to use because we always want our kids to watch uh, instructional videos to help them with their learning, right? Sometimes those videos are way too long. So uh, we want to start it at a specific time frame. Let me show you how I was able to do that. Uh, if you click on the YouTube icon uh, or you hover over it or click on it, it has a link attached to it. Go ahead and click on that link and it'll take you to a YouTube video that I have, uh, that I made. And uh, I want you to notice one thing. Look at where that YouTube video is starting. It's starting at minute, minute 47. Now I did that intentionally because I wanted you guys to see how we can also create 
from these really long links, notice this really long link, I can actually make that link a shortened link. So it'll say something like, for instance, here, it's my bit.ly website, bit.ly forward slash, and then it just has a couple of letters and numbers, like four or five letters and numbers. That's a shortener. So uh, not only do, can we make QR codes, but we can also shorten links. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how I was able to create a link that would take you to this video, but make it start at a specific time frame. So how was I able to do that? Let me show you right now. If I'm on this video and I scroll through it and I'm, I'm going through it and I said, you know what? This right here at minute 49, 48, it's perfect. This is where I want my students to start watching this video. Then from here, this is all you have to do, guys. You're going to click on the share. And then look right here, guys. Start at 49 minutes. That's where I wanted to start. I'm going to click on that. It changes the URL. I'm going to click copy. And where are we going to take it next? Let's go to QR stuff. And I'm going to click on data type. I don't have to go to YouTube. Okay. I don't have to use the YouTube one. I can actually use the website URL and it'll still work. Okay. But if you want, you can go ahead and click on it, paste it. When you click copy guys, it copies to your clipboard. That means that that copied link is there saved. Okay. Then all you have to do is click here, control V and it'll paste that, that link. Now, when I did that, it changed the, the QR code here so that it could work. Now I'm going to move it over to static because I don't want, I'm not going to be changing it. Plus then it's going to ask me to become a, ma a member and subscribe. So anyways, now it's ready. My QR code is created. I can choose to download it or, oops, I downloaded it. Or I can copy the image, go back here and paste it. Oops, I'm on present mode, sorry. And paste it. And now it's right here. And so when I scan that one, it's going to start specifically on minute 49. Did you guys see how that worked? Awesome. So, uh, for your next task, I want you guys to find a, a video that you really like that is content specific to what you teach, but I want you to make it so that it starts at a specific um, minute, right? At a certain minute, create that QR code and paste it right there, guys. We want to make this tailored and customized to your instruction. And when you're done, go ahead and press play and I'll be here waiting for you guys. Alrighty guys, for our next task, we are going to create a QR code from images that we find when we do a search on Google per se, using a search engine. So I want you guys to know that all the images that are online are available to be created into QR codes. So I'm going to ask you to do two things for me. Number one, open a new tab uh, and go to Google and search for um, the water cycle. Okay. And then I also need you to open up a tab with this link that I have displayed here. This is the new web tool that we're going to be using to create and generate QR codes. I do want to show you a variety of web tools that are available to us. Uh, so this is the next one that we're going to be creating. I actually like this one because it's super simple and straightforward. So two tabs, this link, and then go to Google search and search for the water cycle. And that's where we're going to start in the Google search engine. Alrighty guys. So I went to Google and I just searched for water cycle. So a lot of the times when we ask the kids to look up a picture or to find that picture, there might be some pictures that are not that good quality as far as, I mean, like as far as quality, like instruction wise, and you want them to specifically look at one image. And so this is the way we can have them look at that one image uh, by creating a QR code from that image. So very simple, guys. I want you guys all to find, um, I, I don't know, um, 
science. I don't know when, if any of these are any good, but let's just pretend uh, that this one is really good. Okay, I don't know if it is. Uh, but let's pretend that one is really good. The next step I'm gonna ask you to do, I just clicked on it, I'm not going to the page, nothing. It's just on preview mode. And I'm gonna hover over it, my cursor, and I'm gonna right click. And then I want to go down the menu and go and find copy image address because that address is the link that we're gonna be using, okay? And when we put it into that QR code and we scan that QR code, you're not gonna get all of this. You're literally only gonna get this image alone. And that's what we want, right? We don't want kids to get distracted with anything else that's around them. So I'm gonna click on copy image address. Now, were you guys able to open that other tab with the QR code generator? What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take it there. But of course, uh, you might have been asked, prompted to access your camera because one of the things that it does have to offer as well is to be able to scan a QR code also. So the QR code generator also allows you to scan QR codes. So just to show you an example of what exactly it does, let me find um, a simple one here. I'm, I'm just gonna try to find a QR code that I have saved on my camera roll. And here we go. And so here it is and check it out. And there it is. And so if I click on this, it's gonna take me to that link that I made that QR code out of. So really simple, really easy to use. But I wanna use the generate section. So if you look at the menu bar here, I'm gonna click on generate. And you also have the free text that works the same as qrstuff.com. Okay, so exactly the same. I type out information, you scan, you get a little banner, and then uh, you can read it, or if you click on the banner, it's gonna take you to kind of like that Google search engine. But I want to go to URL, and remember, I had copied the image address to the water cycle, so it's been saved on my clipboard. So all I have to do next is type in Control V, and it'll paste that uh, link that I have. So once I did that, it generated my QR code, and if I actually go to my iPad and use the camera feature, I just wanna show you, there it is. Can you guys see that? And all it is is the image, nothing else, no other search engine, the meat of what I want them to look at, the image specifically that I want them to see, it's right here, so it facilitates that. So what I want you to do next, guys, this is your next task, is I want you to create a QR code out of an image that you feel is important and is directly correlated to your instruction. When you're done doing that, and we're gonna be using this, when you're done doing this, that I want you to copy the image, okay? You can choose to save it, and if you click save up here, it'll download it and save it to your to your desktop. But I wanna just copy the image. So hopefully it copied the image. I'm gonna go back to my presentation, and I'm going to paste that image. And there it is. And I'm going to paste it right here. And I'm gonna pull it. And there it is. So your final task for making a QR code from an image is to go find something that's directly correlated to your instruction, copy the image address, and paste it on here, guys. And we know that for this one, we use the QR code generator.com. All right, guys, go ahead and press pause, get that done, and then I'll be waiting for you right here. All righty, guys. So for our next activity, we're gonna be working on making QR codes from our drive, from the files that we have in our drive. Every single thing you have in your drive, you can make QR codes out of. So I'm gonna ask you to take this time and press pause on the video, and I want you to make sure that on your drive, you wanna open up your drive, have a, a, a tab open here, that on your drive, you have an image on there, you have a video on there, 
and that you have a, a PDF on there as well. Okay, so I'm going to show you really quick how to um, make sure that that's what you have to identify those. How can you identify if something's an image, a video, and a PDF? So I'm going to take you to my drive next. Alrighty guys, so we're in my drive here. Here's a folder that I created just for this presentation. I wanted to show you guys the difference. This right here, this little uh, picture lets you know that you're working with an image. Plus, I never renamed it and it says IMG and dot JPEG lets you know that's an image. Here, this one lets you know it's a PDF, okay? And lastly, this uh, allows me to know that, uh, to identify this as a movie, okay? So it's still probably loading because I just created it, but eventually it'll, it'll populate. Uh, and if you hover over it, it says MP4. So MP4s are our video clips. So uh, go ahead, press pause on, on this video and make sure you have those three so that we can create QR codes out of them. Alrighty guys, so if for whatever reason you do not know how to get your pictures or your videos from your iPad to your drive, I do have a YouTube tutorial um, if you go to this web, to this uh, slideshow and you look underneath, I have a link under the presenters view. I have a link there that lets you uh, watch how to upload your images and videos uh, from your iPad to your drive. Okay, guys? Uh, and if you can't find it there, then you can just go to my YouTube channel and you'll see I'll have the video there for you guys to access. So I hope you guys were able to find those three images. Now, what I'm gonna use next, or not three images, I'm sorry, three items. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna use another resource to create a QR code. And this one's really, really simple. Uh, it's called Mobile Barcodes. So if you want, you can just click on this and then this one will take you directly there. I already have it open. So this is the Mobile Barcodes website it's another one that allows you to create qr codes i don't think I've, I've navigated through it it doesn't really allow me to scan i haven't seen that feature but it's very simple and straightforward you put the url here you press submit and you'll be able to get a qr code so really straightforward never hardly ever use this part or these features that it has but i did want to give you as many options as possible out there so this is what we're doing. I want everyone, everyone to go to their drive next and find an image from your drive. Find an image from your drive and we're gonna start by make, getting a QR code from that um, image, okay? Making a QR code. So this is what I want from you guys. I want you guys to click on just the, the bar down here, so it's gonna be light blue, that lets you know you've selected it. And then I want you to right click. And you should get a menu like this. And once you right click, you wanna click on get shareable link. Now this is a school uh, Gmail account, so there's certain restrictions uh, when it comes to sharing these uh, items, right? These files. So I need to ask myself, do I want to limit this QR code to only people within my district? I'm going to go to share settings and under share settings here, link sharing on anyone with link can view. I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to click on more. And these are the options I want you guys to take a look at. Once I share that link and I make it into our QR code, do I want anyone to be able to scan this code and access the image? Or do I only want people who work for La Jolla to be able to find and access this? Or do I want anyone who works for La Jolla who has this link to be able to access it. That means they're going to have to sign in, be signed in with their ljisd.com account to be able to open up this QR code and see the file 
in this case, the image? Or do I want to share it only specifically to certain individuals? So right now, I'm under anyone with the link can access this. No sign-in required. Required, I'm sorry. And they can view it. And that's what I want. I want them to be able, I want my kids to be able to scan it. And once they scan it, for the image to automatically come out. I don't want them to have to sign in. There's no actual uh, legalities here or uh, FERPA issues. It's a picture of myself, so I'm good with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And then I'm going to copy the link. I'm gonna click on done. So now that I've copied that link, we're gonna go and toggle back to that tab, which is called the mobile barcodes. And I'm going to paste it because it's saved on my clipboard. So I'm control V, we'll paste it. And then I'm going to click on submit. And once I click on submit, I have my QR code ready to go. So I'm going to scan it just so that you guys can see how it would look. And if you have your device available, you can scan it as well. So, ooh. I went ahead and scanned it, and there I am. I know, ridiculous, but still. There's, there's a purpose for this image, and I'll show you later. Uh, but anyways, uh, and so it worked. So it's that simple. So again, you have to always just ask yourself, who do I want this, who do I want this to be uh, accessible to, okay? so. I want you guys to do that. Find your first image on your drive, find the image, right click, get shareable link, share settings, and then click here in this gray bar, and I clicked on more, and then who would you like, or how would you like to be able to share this? And once you're done, click save, copy link and go to that mobile barcode to complete this activity. Once you have this available guys, you can copy it and we're going to take it over here. Oh. There we go. We're going to take it over here. Now if it's too big, you can double click and once you double click, click you have the crop option and there you go and now I can put it in there alrighty guys so any image you have on your drive let's do that go ahead and press pause if you need to do watch me do it again rewind the video that's what it's for guys and I'll be waiting here to show you the next one which is really exciting it's actually really fun to work on alrighty guys enjoy Alrighty guys, so for our next one is making a QR code out of a video from our drive. And we're gonna be using something called QR Code Monkey. Uh, and uh, it's a really neat web tool. It's one of my favorites. Uh, so I want you guys to do this for me. I want you to click on this link so that it opens up and you have it open on a tab. And then I want you to go to your drive and find that uh, video uh, that we're going to create a QR code from, okay? Now, if for whatever reason you can't find a video and you're struggling, guys, it's okay. Go get a YouTube video or, or anything else. It's a matter of just practicing uh, because QR Code Monkey is not limited to just video QR codes, you know what I mean? QR Code Monkey can be made into everything we've already done, a regular uh, website, a, an image address, uh, a YouTube video. So don't worry about it, but if you can, it's good practice, guys. So go ahead and click on the link to take you to the web page and uh, open that up. And then I'm going to take you to my drive so we can move on. So I'm here on my drive and I'm going to create a video uh, QR code. And I know that you can't, it didn't load, it hasn't loaded. There it is. This is actually just a video tutorial on how to change the name of your iPad. 
you go to general about and then name and then you can change the name of your iPad especially if you're doing uh, for like airdrop purposes and when you're airdropping you don't want just to see air iPad the name called iPad because you'll never finish uh, you'll never find the right one excuse me so with that uh, that's my video that I want to create a QR code. Maybe I want to share it out to my teachers because I'm doing a training and it's going to require them to have their airdrop on and I need to know who's who. So I want them to change the name of their iPad. So from here, guys, we're going to practice again. Same thing. Right click, get shareable link. Going to toggle this over. And then I'm going to change the settings. And I'm going to allow everyone who has this link to access it, save, and to view it. And the link is copied already, but uh, let's just do it again. And then I'm going to go to done. Now I'm going to go to QR Monkey, which is my favorite, guys. And this is what QR Monkey looks like. And so because I do have that link already saved to my clipboard, all I have to do is remove this one and paste it, control V. Now it's not gonna change like all the other ones have been doing it because this one allows us to customize our QR code. It won't change until we actually uh, click on create QR code over here, okay? So once we add that link there, we're gonna click on set colors and you get to color it however you want, colorize it. And so I want a gradient and I want it to be um, purplish. And then I'm gonna go to the other color and I want it maybe green. And then this changes if you, uh, if you want it like um, the gradient to go be horizontal or vertical, like from this side to this side or up or down, up and down. Uh, and then custom eye color. It are these right here. These are your eyes, right? That's what they call them. So if you want to you want to give them specific colors as well, you can. Uh, I'm going to go for blue and um, I don't know. That would be the green. Blue. Gosh, this is like the part that takes us the longest, right? Uh, because we want them to look super cute. I want like an orange. Here we go. There. Good enough. Uh, I got to make it a, a darker color. So I'm going to go with red. All right. Uh, it looks like a box of crayons. <laughs> so then after that, you can actually also add, you can finish there and you can create the QR code and see how it's looking. Oh, there it is. And you can be done with it. Or I don't really like that red and blue, but whatever. Or you can add more to it and customize it even more. And you can add some images here. Let's say it's a, it's a video to a YouTube tutorial. You can actually click on this one and then create QR code. And now that's going to be in the center. And so if you scan that code, it'll work even though there's an image in the center. Okay, that's the really cool part about it. What else can you do? You can upload your own image. So if you got a cute Bitmoji or a picture of yourself or... I'm just going to find something I have on my computer right now. So I have that. I have a, a, a sun. I can actually add that sun in the center. I can upload, uh, like I said, if you have your Bitmojis. Um, gosh, I'm trying to find a my genie. I have something called a genie. And so um, I just want to find it for you. Here it is. And so I'm going to look for, it can't be a GIF. It has to be uh, a solid image. So a PNG. And there it is. And create. And there's my little, what you call a genie. I know it's kind of tiny. Um, I wonder what this does. It's just the pixelation, the quality. Then after that, you can continue further customize it. And you can change, instead of them being little squares, you can change them to, I don't know what you would call these, but I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to change the eye frame to this and the eyeball shape to this because it looks like a flower. And I'm going to create it. 
and there it is. So it kind of changed. This part didn't really change much. I don't know if that, let me see. There it is. Create. There it is. So it changed a little bit. So you get to customize it however you want. You can download it. Uh, actually, for this one, you have to download it. All the other ones, you could have just copied it, but this one doesn't allow you to just copy it. Okay? So even though I'll try, let me see. Because I've tried in the past and it doesn't let me. No, it won't let me. So you have to download it as a PNG so it'll download. So let's say you're doing this off your iPad. You can actually take a screenshot and then crop the screenshot and it'll work. So this whole uh, web tool still works off your iPad on a web browser. Uh, but instead of downloading it, you can take a screenshot of it. Okay. So we're going to move on and I'm going to take you back to my... Alrighty, so now that it actually downloaded, I'm going to click on insert, image, upload from my computer. Remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always re uh, rewind. Sounds like VHS, right? Because that's how we used to use it all the time. Uh, but it's true. You can go back. You can rewind. Uh, and here's my image under my downloads. And I'm going to open it up. And now... I can make it smaller and I'm not going to crop it, but you get the gist. That's how it would work. Isn't that neat? How cute is that? Okay, guys. So now uh, that you've done yours, uh, if you didn't do it, if you just watched through this and, and now you want to do it, go ahead and press pause. If not, we're going to move on and we're doing our last one, which is a PDF. So under for this PDF, I'm going to use what's a uh, uni tag. Okay, and UniTag looks like this, and it's very similar to QR Monkey, and you get to uh, create and customize your QR code as well. What's the biggest difference? Haven't really found much. Uh, they're both pretty good. Um, you can add logos to both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my drive, and I'm going to grab my PDF. Now, this is the thing about this PDF that I love, is this PDF that I created um, is a hyperlink doc. That means if I cover over this and click on this, it'll take me to the Reading Renaissance webpage. If I click here, it'll take me to a little video tutorial for kids to see how to read and test on books. Um, here, uh, here, the Mac and Via website and so on. I can click on this globe to access history books. And so that's a really cool thing about creating these comprehensive resources. If you're interested in that, go to my YouTube tutorial, uh, YouTube channel. I have videos. Uh, I have a really, I have a, a PD session from La Jolla ISD. So that one's pretty lengthy, but it goes in thoroughly on how to do this. And then I have a really quick on how to add links to uh, your, your PowerPoints or your keynotes or your slide presentations and how to make them into hyperlink documents. So anyways, take a look at that. So this is my PDF document that I want to create a QR code out of. Uh, I'm going to right click, get shareable link. This is our third time practicing, guys. I'm going to toggle on the link sharing, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to edit the sharing. If I only want my kids from my school, my people from La Jolla ISD, because this, this is a La Jolla ISD resource that I created, then I'm going to limit it to anyone at La Jolla ISD with the link can view. So I'm gonna go more and here, anyone with the link. So just because I want you guys to see access, they need to sign in with the La Jolla ISD link, uh, email, Gmail account in order to be able to open this resource. And I'm gonna make this one specifically like that because this resource is created for LJISD. So I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna copy the link, and now I'm gonna take it over to the uni tag. And I'm going to, here was another one that I had used, and I'm gonna paste it, I'm gonna confirm it, it will now make it for me, but now I want to add a little more customization to it. So I can click on templates and it'll show me some templates that are there available for me. I can mess with the colors 
as well. So uh, different colors if I want to create something. Um, so I am going to let you guys work on this one on your own. You'll see my final product in a bit, but go ahead and go to your um, drive, get that PDF, uh, get the link, make it so that it's only accessible to LJISD uh, employees and bring it over to Unitag and let's customize that QR code, see what you guys come up with. Just keep this in mind and they give you that warning. Customized QR codes might be unscannable, so you wanna make sure that uh, once you, you're you ready to use it, that you uh, actually scan it and you take a look at it and see if it works for you, okay guys? So get that done, put it in our slideshow presentation and I'll be waiting for you there when you're done. All right guys, so there's my final product. I scanned it beforehand. I didn't have to download it, I could right click and copy it and just paste it on my slides presentation. But remember, if you want to keep them for future reference or to keep using them, download them and put them in your drive uh, somewhere, a file, and name them as well. You don't want to have to be scanning to see which ones are which, right? Uh, so anyways, uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, which one do you prefer? I actually prefer QR code monkey over Unitag, uh, but I mean, to each their own, right? Um, Anyways, I do want you guys to know that everything we did, uh, we did uh, earlier websites and we used QR stuff. You can use, you can create a website QR code using QR Monkey. They're not limited to what we uh, created off of them. I hope that makes sense. So anyways, let's move on. We're gonna finish up guys. I just have two more things to go over, which is really how this can directly impact your instruction. So. Uh, I want you guys to know that uh, Pick Collage is a really cool app that allows you to make all these graphic organizers and these visually appealing uh, images and your kids can use it to create. But after you create, and this is the free version, not the Pick Collage, the education one. Uh, actually, the education one doesn't allow for this, doesn't have this feature. Once you create your Pick Collage, and I have one here, made by a student talking about the effects of the cotton gin on the south and um, what you can do afterwards is go here where it says copy link and as soon as you copy that link click on it it copies your the link so if you're working off you're going to be working off your ipad to do this i'm working off my ipad i'm going to click copy link and it copies it to the ipad's clipboard then I'm going to go to my web browser, Safari or Google, uh, or Chrome, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to type in whichever of the ones we just learned about. I can work on uh, QR stuff, the QR code generator, QR monkey I can use as well, or Unitag. I can use any of those and then I'm going to paste that link on there and it's going to create a QR code for this pick collage that my students created. Isn't that neat? That's amazing. Um, just keep in mind that if you cannot download that image, you can just take a screenshot. And a screenshot is if you hold the home button and the power button, don't keep it pressed because then you're gonna restart it. Just a quick press, both of them at the same time, and you'll hear that, that screenshot, right? That camera snap. And uh, that lets you know that it saved it and you can find that image of your QR code on your iPad on the camera roll. So that's just an FYI, a little uh, tip and trick, sorry guys, that I use a lot in my classroom, especially want, when I want to uh, show off student work or things like that. Um, so Pick collage, remember it's the free one. It looks like this one. This is the free one. And it lets you create a, a get a link and create a QR code. All right, so our last thing for today, how to take a lesson from, how to take a regular lesson, right? A hands-on lesson to a, making it techified with QR codes. So this is a lesson that I would do a lot, an activity I would do a lot, especially for um, Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol, which is PSYOP, 
uh, it helps uh, our, our uh, English language learners practice and become more proficient in their language domains. So it is called a three-way match. And the idea is that the kids get handed a card. The card might have the term, the definition, or a picture, right? But the, uh, every child gets one, and the goal is for the kids to get up and find their triad. So I might have the term. That means I need to find my, my triad consists of the definition and the picture because I have the term. So the kids would get their card, look at their notes, compare, and then realize, okay, so this is probably this definition, and I'm looking for this as a picture. Once they, I give them some time to look at that, and then they get up, and then they go find their triad, and the first group to get their triad get, got points and stuff like that. But here was one of the problems that I faced a lot, is by the time the kids were in their triads and I was going to check, sometimes they were wrong. And so then I'd spend all this time saying, wait, why are you there? You're supposed to be over there and you're over here because, you know, so even though it is, that is part of the learning uh, process, sometimes we need some ease in facilitating that uh, because we are just one teacher. So this next way that I teched it up allowed that allowed me to be more proficient as an educator and get these activities done a lot uh, easier. So this is what I did. And I did gather the idea from this from a, a colleague. And I do love, you know, she, she gathered it. I don't know where exactly she got it from, uh, but uh, I do like to give credit where credit is due. So I did get this, uh, the, the idea from a colleague. I had always done that three-way match activity uh, because it does lend itself to practicing all those language domains. But um, anyways, I said, you know what? I'm going to put the three terms on a piece of paper, and then I'm going to put a QR code on it, and I'm going to cut them into strips in which every piece of the paper has a part of the QR code. I'm going to hand them out like I would the index cards. I'm going to allow them to get up, and then they're going to have to try to match uh, themselves do the three-way match and scan it. Now, if they scan it and it populates something, then they're correct. If not, their kids would be like, miss, we're scanning and we're scanning and there's nothing. That means it's wrong, guys. So you got to not waste time and keep looking for your correct answer, for your correct triad. So let me just scan this one using my phone so that you can see what it uh, shows. So this is what I created. All right. And so if they scan this and this is the correct answer, then they're going to get an image that might look like this, which is my bitmoji. And so um, if they don't get anything, then it's wrong. Okay. So I just want you to keep this in mind though. Every QR code needs to be a different link. You can't make the same good job you did it link for all your documents because then everybody would be correct. I hope that makes sense. So make sure that every every word has a different link to it, okay? A different bitmoji in order for the kids to be able to scan and check to see if they're right or wrong. And uh, this is the, the idea that I did get from a colleague. Um, there it is. And so uh, it's actually just vocabulary and term, and then you cut it in the middle and they would find their partner, scan, and if it did scan, then they, it was correct, okay? The, you might be thinking, well, they're just gonna wanna scan and scan. It would take them a lot longer. At first, when we first did the activity with the kids, you thought, they thought, oh, well, easy, I'll just find my, my partner to scan. That took them so much longer than actually sitting down and thinking, okay, this is my term, what am I looking for as a definition? And that actually worked out a lot faster. Uh, and and help them out. So I hope you guys liked those were just a few activities the pick collage this kinesthetic one a lot of uh, Times we're under a false uh, assumption that uh, giving technology to kiddos will create a sedentary type of learning environment And that's not the case. It's just about how innovative can we get to create these these engaging lessons lessons for our kids 
um, that meet all the needs and demands for student learning. All right, so um, I really, I really want to say thank you guys. Uh, but most importantly, I am humbled and I appreciate every person that does uh, click on my link to watch this online PD session. It does make these long nights uh, worthwhile of recording these PD sessions, guys. Um, I, I, I do thank you and don't forget to, if you want, leave a message. Let me know, guys, so I can thank you personally because I do appreciate you taking this time uh, to watch and to grow professionally. Uh, and most importantly, to honor me by um, watching this video, guys, giving me that honor. So I really do appreciate your time. Um, you can uh, find me. There is my email address. You can also find me on Twitter and, of course, on YouTube. Um, in addition, give a shout out if you're a teacher watching uh, for LJISD, La Jolla ISD. Give us a shout out, guys. Uh, our district's working really hard to facilitate teachers in this time of remote learning. I hope you guys are are, are gaining knowledge and uh, let us know above everything how we're doing and if there's anything else that we can help with. Okay, guys? Because y'all are the ones in the trenches and uh, if y'all let us know, we're here to help. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later.